I love building stuff, and I love coding, and I love sharing my projects with other people. I know I'm not going to get it 100% perfect every time the first time, so I also really like hearing feedback about the faults in my project. Today on The Hookup, we're going to look at some of the feedback from my $5 MQTT Windows Sensor video and how I address those issues. First suggestion was from YouTube users Sorn DP and Marcin Domanowski. Sorry if I butchered your name. They suggested using a static IP instead of DHCP to knock a few seconds off the response time. Here's how I implemented it. When I flash the program for the first time, I comment out these five lines of code. This makes it so the ESP connects to the Wi-Fi using DHCP and it stays connected. Then I go into my router and I reserve that IP address for this device. After the IP is reserved, I go back and input the reserved IP into the user configuration section and I uncomment those lines of code. Just as Sorn and Marson suggested, the change reduces amount of time required to send the MQTT message by about 50%, causing the message to come through in an average of about two seconds. Thanks guys. The next criticism came from Reddit user Largo Alfactorum, who noted that there was no good way to tell the status of the batteries. And that was a valid concern, and one that was actually fairly easy to fix. I changed the code so the very first thing the program does is measure the voltage on the VCC pin. I compared the numbers I was getting with the zero load battery readings from my multimeter, and I determined that the VCC voltage function returns a voltage about 600 millivolts below the actual value. This is most likely due to the fact that the Wi-Fi radio puts a decent load on the battery while the voltage is being measured. Anyways, I just went ahead and added 600 to the value of the VCC millivoltage to make the numbers easier to understand when they come through. In my tests, I determined that using the static IP and replacing the enable pin resistor with just a straight wire allowed the window to send MQTT messages all the way down to about 2700 millivolts. To help with Lago Alfactorum's issue, I changed the code so that if the VCC voltage is under 2900 millivolts, the last will and testament message changes to include the current millivolts of the battery and the message replace battery instead of just saying closed. With these new changes to the code and wiring, you can get about 15 open close messages between the time that your window starts telling you to replace the battery and when it stops working completely. This should give you plenty of time to throw in a new coin cell. Let's review the changes. Number one, the static IP change lowers the response time from about four seconds to two seconds. Number two, switching the IP to static and changing the enable resistor to a straight wire significantly decreases the minimum voltage required in the battery to operate. My test using a brand new battery yielded about 110 open closed messages until a message was no longer sent, with the last 15 messages sending the replace battery warning. Also note that these were consecutive boots, and after letting the battery sit unused for about 15 minutes, the voltage had rebounded enough to send another message after the initial failure. Number three, battery voltage is no longer a mystery. You can be sure that if your MQTT message says close, that your battery will have enough juice to send another message when the window opens. These improvements were so significant that I actually went through and updated all six of my windows to new software. It's not super fun reflashing an ESP01 that's had the headers removed, but it's actually not too bad once you've done it a few times. I just tin some jumper cables and tack them on really quickly with a soldering iron. This makes them really easy to remove once the new program has been added. Thanks to everybody who commented and gave your suggestions, and I hope these changes are enough to calm some of the reservations that you had about these DIY sensors. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookup.